I think there's a I think there's a co- mm. communal infrastructure in yeah. religion that it has fundamentally been like taken away from society mm. just through public opinion of the day mm. you know yeah you know what do you take from religion or you take from any anything of, of that nature you take the elements that suit and and just be the best human being <laughs> mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah no I, I get that and I think like I think like churches or like religious places in general are like some of the few remaining places where it's like what connects people isn't yeah. necessarily whether they I don't know voted leave or remain or mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean support oh my god you're so like, right <laughs> it's like actually we can we might on a personal level like disagree in all these things but actually we believe that there's something bigger that mm. joins us together and therefore doesn't have to divide us <laughs> Killer Keller official com. THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton, and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp, and street culture. THTC, eco fashion redefined since 1999. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. We're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. Back in effect. You should know better if you don't know by now. Get to know, sharing is caring. Spread the word. Hit the subscribe. Hit the bell button. You're good as gold. Big shout out to Graffiti Kings inside. And yeah, by the power invested in technology, we are on the line to a gentleman that I could only describe as... Uh, vocally influenced by the grime scene but he's got some next moves that definitely lean into more deeper genres of of classic mc versatilities and more hey nick what are you saying brother nick brewing house how you doing man good to be here yeah yeah we did try this before we're not gonna lie to ourselves a <laughs> <laughs> little bit of deja vu going on <laughs> <laughs> no it's all good man it's all good uh yeah Nice. Well, we did have a really great conversation last time. I feel like I know you a hell of a lot more easier talking now, so it's just a good thing. Yeah, right? this just makes catching up at this point. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, you probably get. Well, this probably doesn't happen so much with your own parents, let alone with a podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, man. But no, it's all good, man. I'm happy to be here. Happy to How have the opportunity you? to do it again. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, had my EP out for a couple of weeks now, which I'm really, really happy about. Um, Bro, that EP is fire. Thank you, man. No, I really appreciate that. For those of you I that really have not checked that. out Nick's, Nick's new EP, I woke up. I woke up today. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's him telling me that. But it was <laughs> sick. I, I mean, I've been bumping <laughs> it for you, like, man. since we last spoke, really. So, Thank you. Um, and yeah, my feelings still stay the same. So we can dive straight in from there. The EP's been going yeah, yeah. good. So the feedback's been great. Yeah, yeah, feedback's been really good. Um, it was quite like a, a... It's one of those projects which for me is like, as as obvious and as silly as it sounds, it's like I really wanted people to listen. Do you know what I mean? It's like... Yeah. Um, and it feels like from the feedback that I've got that people really have. And mm. that, that, feels, that feels good because I was quite vulnerable um throughout the ep and it feels good to know that that kind of pays dividends in people really connecting with what i'm talking about and what i was trying to get across so yeah i'm I'm happy with the response has it has it turned you on to the fact that your supporters or people that are discovering it newly discovering it um Mm. are translating what is emotive within your lyrics into their own narrative or like turning it into something else that maybe you didn't realize it was yeah yeah which is really interesting to see because it's like I was yeah someone sent me a message and they were kind of like they were like quoting different lines I said and stuff and and how they interpreted that what it meant to them and it was like it was really cool because it's like I think that's just the power of words you know they can take Mm. on new meaning for whoever like hears or reads or is kind of like interpreting them. So yeah, that's exciting just, and I think like from, for me, my, I've always felt like with my favorite artists I can connect with, but that goes beyond me having the exact same or even anything like near kind of experiences to them because, you know, I'm connecting with 
emotions i'm connecting with feelings as opposed to just straight like experiences so it feels good to know that yeah for sure that's what creates the tribe right that's the tribe effect because when Mm -hmm. they when people identify with you and what you're going through but also can take a little bit of that with them Mm -hmm. that's that's the ultimate goal isn't it that's like the ultimate goal yeah yeah man yeah so feels super exciting and it's just like you know been a bit of a drab year for just everyone but Mm. like I think that's what I'm really ha- happy about with like the the concept of I woke up today just being for me personally the, there's so much to be grateful for not not ignoring the challenges and difficulties that life just presents because it's life yeah. but choosing to kind of like switch my perspective a little bit so yeah the the the, the sentiment on a lot of the songs for me and bear in mind again like you come from a, a and you've adopted your sound from a grime influence. Yeah, yeah. So, the, but the, there is a, 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 a level of depth within the songs which mm. I kind of want to steer in towards. You mm. know, it seems to me that a lot of the su- su- suggestion comes from a, f- a level of faith, mm. a level of um, self-aware and yeah. just ever ever being present in how you're feeling and, yeah, the faith behind that. You are, you're, mm. you're deep in that that place, aren't you? Yeah, man, I'm a Christian and that kind of like affects all aspects of my view. That's not to say that I'm I'm far from a I'm definitely far from a perfect human being, but I think like one of the whatever someone's beliefs are, um, mm. and I'm not someone to try and force my beliefs on anyone, but whatever someone's beliefs are, like part of what I love about Christianity is like it's not about you know, do good and good will happen to you. It's like do good because it's good to do good. Do you know what I mean? But there's yeah. also like there's also this like there's not a promise that God will will fix all my problems and that I'll never have any challenges. But there is this promise that He won't leave me, and mm. that and for me that's what I found and find in life really um, really powerful. You know, like everyone experiences difficulties and challenges and the people that really stick out to me in those times are the people that have like, I've been able to rely on and I've been able to kind of journey with through difficult times. And that for me is quite reflective Mm. of like my faith and my relationship with God. It's like, he's not this magical genie that like (laughs) will sort everything out for me, (laughs) but, but he's there for me. And yeah. And I think that's like one of the, one of the messages and kind of just like one of the sentiments that comes through. Um, Sure. And like as much as it's faith, it's also like a journey of lack of faith. Like sometimes, you know, at the same time, because a lot of I woke up today is about just kind of battles, personal battles with like insomnia and different stuff like that. And Mm -hmm. and those times like can feel very lonely, you know, when you feel like you're the only person awake in the whole entire world. And it's like, wait, if this God person or if this Jesus exists, like where is he now kind of thing? So yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to be very honest and not just be like, yeah, everything's good. And like, I wanted to be able to paint a real picture of what kind of faith and, and battling with and, and being mm. secure in faith can look like. For sure. For sure. And in a landscape of music where often, I mean, apart from maybe the US side of things, there was a time where a lot of artists, you know, they'd go up on the Grammys and they'd shout out God, shout out Jesus, shout out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but as time's gone on, particularly from a UK point of view, not a lot of people within this new realm of uh, free thinking and um, acceptance and socially aware people. I, th- I feel like sometimes religion, um, it, it's sidelined to your own personal agendas and endeavors. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it, to, to, particularly in like grime and UK stuff, I could be completely wrong, but that's the, that's the, that's the tone I feel is set. No one really talks about religion like that, do they? Mm, mm. Yeah. It's interesting because like, I think I always, like I've grown up in a Christian family and it's like, you know, I've had my own journeys and made my own decisions, but it's something that is kind of like, shaped my upbringing just shaped different parts of me and I think a lot of what I used to worry about a lot was like I don't want people to feel like I'm preaching to them and this that and the rest and I just kind of really like I just think well what is preaching like because every rapper 
I listen to is giving me life as they view it. Do you know what I mean? So like mm. they're given their own kind of interpretation and understanding and experience of life. And why can't I do the same? And actually, if I don't kind of discuss my faith, then that's a huge part of my life. So how can yeah. I like, how can I just ignore it? It's like, do you know what I mean? It, it's just like removing a huge, a huge part of my, of my identity. And, and in many ways, like what I want to be the biggest part of my identity. So, yeah. And I think I just realized like people are not idiots. Like people, <laughs> listeners yeah. are not stupid. People can take what they want. And like, I've got so many friends or like so many influences that have like completely different worldviews, different, different uh, understandings and just different opinions to me. Mm. And that's great. Like, I'm so glad that I'm able to be friends with people that don't agree with me on every single thing. Not that we're like always arguing, but I think it's good to like, you know, yeah, be yeah, yeah. I agree stuff. with you. Do you know what I mean? A thousand percent. A thousand percent. My my state of play where religion is concerned is is mm. essentially whatever it takes to get you by. I think there's a I think there's a co- mm. communal infrastructure in yeah. religion that it has fundamentally been like taken away from society mm. just through public opinion of the day, mm. you know. Yeah. You know what you take from religion or you take from any anything of of that nature, you take the elements that suit and and just be the best human being. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Did you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I get that. And I think like, I think like churches or like religious places in general are like, not the only places, but some of the few remaining places where it's like, what connects people isn't yeah. necessarily whether they, I don't know, voted leave or remain. Mm. Or, do you know what I mean? Support oh my God, you're so labor. right. <laughs> it's like, actually, we can, we might on a personal level, like disagree in all these things, but actually we believe that there's something bigger that mm. joins us together and therefore doesn't have to divide us. And yeah. that's not to say that always worked perfectly. That's it working. <laughs> you know, well, obviously human beings are complicated. and we. <laughs> but I think that's really important. Like just... You know, it's there's there's so much in that being able to kind of like connect on something bigger than what mm. just about me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, people better be ready for them churches because with the YMCA's, with the pubs, mm. with the William Hills, with the cafes, with the clubs, with the raves, with the but everything getting shut down. The only thing that is going to be open is the church. <laughs> Yeah, man. Like yeah. Everything else, yeah. your whole community, like people are just like, we're all, you know, we're all just like kind of pandering to this state of play that's going yeah. on in the world, but we don't know what it's going to be like in, in, yeah. in a couple of years' time. It's going to be very, very different. No, I fully, man. Totally. Crazy. Totally. Well, while yeah. we're on the subject, where did it come from? How did it all begin? Like, were yeah. you fr- were you built from a club world? Was it from a well, a, a battle place, a place of, of rhyming and skills? So, and- no, for me, like, DJing was like the first kind of thing. So I oh, grew up shit. in, yeah, I grew up in East London. I can see that 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 new Mark Mixer poster kind of thing behind you is flipping oh. sick, man. Um, him, baby. Oh, come on, sick. Um, so for me, I got like a set of record decks when I was like eleven. I think my cousin was getting rid of some, and my dad was like, "Look, they're eighty quid. We can we can do it." Do you know what I mean? Do you want it? Started, but they were like belt drive, whatever. I think I snapped right. belts in, in like <laughs> very very quick. But <laughs> it was like the early two thousands, and grime was just kind of like well, it wasn't even grime yet. But the record shops, the vinyl shops that I was going to, was stocking a lot of that stuff, kind of East London area. So I was just started buying it up. Um, what, I say what, were the records, uh, what were the record stores of the day, bro? What, around East London at the time? So, uh, Rhythm Division in Bow. Uh-huh. Um, there was Boogie Town Records in Walthamstow, uh, mm. Record Box in Ilford. Uh, there was Boo Records in Barking. You know, there was like, there, was, there was a few, Sick. man. There was a few. But I'd only have like seven quid a week, do you know what I mean? So I'd maybe be able to buy like one, like one vinyl was like seven ninety nine. that kind of oh, price. No, that so shit was I never, terrible. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I just really got into it because I loved I loved rhyming and I was rhyming all the time, but I was incredibly shy. So I wasn't mm. sharing that with anyone. Uh, and my mates were spitting. So I had just like a very simple setup in my room, like a little tape deck. Do you know what I mean? We'd record mm. tapes. This is like 13, 14 kind of stuff. Um, and I started kind of getting into MCing myself, like nothing particularly um, serious. Um 
And yeah, it was just like, kind of grew from there, got involved spitting with guys in my area and yeah, like I never, I just loved it. I loved it and I loved the words. I loved all of that stuff, but I never necessarily, I think I'm, I'm from quite a straight laced family. Do you know what I mean? My yeah. dad's, my dad's been working since he was 16. My dad's very musical, but like it had always been in like the hobby category, category, yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I just thought music would just be a hobby. I uh, went to uni, did history, um, and started recording mixtapes when I was at uni and it just kind of just just developed from there man like oh, that's I sick. just feel like I've I've like yeah just tumbled to this point but <laughs> but the no, lyric side it. of it it feels so like what you what you bring to the table is so um articulated it, it, you know mm. I get the influences being of the day totally but mm. it seems to me like you are definitely gone down a path of discovery that the lyrical content it harks back to a more refined hip hop, hip hop yeah. background. Yeah, so like I had an older cousin um, who lived like close to like five years older than me. So he was like from the like, the late nineties, early two thousands. He was just feeding me music. So Sick. he was feeding me like uh, Wu Tang Clan, Nas, mm. Big L. Uh, they were like some of the ones that I read, kind of like that kind of gritty uh, East Coast stuff. Mm. Um, and I just fell in love with it, man. I fell in love with it. I, I particularly, particularly connected with Nas. I just loved how, um, mm. just how articulate he was. I loved how clean his his vocals were and just like, it, he never, in the best way possible, he never really like his his tone didn't like, there wasn't like this huge range, but it was just, it was always just so clear. And it was like, every time he spoke, I can just yeah. picture what he's saying, whether it's yeah. like NY state of mind or like whatever it is, it's just like, I can picture this. Yeah. And I started to just love it. And there was an old school website called uh, original hip hop lyric archive.com. And I just go on, <laughs> it was like ohhla.com. And I'll just go on it and just read all the lyrics and, so I really, really, really got into the word side of things. Yeah. Um, and wow. that was kind of what I was listening to. And then I think like the energy of grime was very different from a lyrical perspective. Um, I think that's why I loved Kano. And I think that's why I loved Kano from the jump because yeah. he was like, he was incredibly lyrical. And obviously like Nas's music is a lot slower than what would be the grime tempo. So there's just more opportunity for more words because it's not so fast and storytelling as, as well you know storytelling yeah, yeah. like you, it's, it's hard to tell a story at like 140 beats per minute it's not impossible yeah, but yeah. it's a little bit harder it lends itself more to kind of like short sharp uh like like that kind of effectiveness Attack. but yeah but like kano dizzy rascal wiley uh these artists i was just loving because it just felt so raw, so yeah. like unrefined in the best possible way. Dangerous, fucking dangerous, yeah. like unapologetic. Yeah. I know exactly what, I just yeah. remember it. I, it's a feeling that I remember. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When 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 Nas, I felt like, or or something of that, that generation, that ilk, I always felt like their ego didn't get away, get in the way of the 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 song. I know, yeah, and I know yeah. it did, but in yeah, a, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's like Nas was there to take mm. you somewhere rather than yes. show off versatility in any kind of aggressive way. A hundred percent, man. And it's just like, and I think that's what, that's just what's really like sick about like the art of just spitting in general. It's like sometimes to get the, you can, you can lyrical miracle someone to death Mm. Like you can really give them that stuff, which is cool. But then there's also times you just got to pull back and just say something simple, just say something like in just a different way. And I think that's where I started to connect really with the London MCs because it was like, there was obviously speaking a language that I was much more familiar with in terms yeah. of the, um, the like, yeah, just the, the lingo. And I think just listening to pirate radio and stuff, it was like, ah, oh, it's just, 
it's it's alive do you know what I mean it was mm. like something that was growing before my eyes and and you were hearing the mistakes and you were hearing the yeah. feedback on the mic and all that stuff which was just like yeah sick just that feeling you know of like you're yeah. right it was real time you were learning with it you were kind of on its journey yeah yeah I feel that because you know to their credit I think when Grime did come out mm. for me and, and I guess for you to a degree, perhaps the, the, the flow and the structure and the way it was really kind of like layman's like by numbers, simple rhyming, mm. but there's a counter argument for that, which is it in a very punk kind of way, putting too much into that situation. It, it uh, dilutes the, 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 the attack. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even even with the bass and the music, the, the the music they were on top of, the 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 notes and everything were eerie. They were they were they would leave you in suspense. And then the bass line, from a real primal point of view, was heavier than most. And it was just attack, attack, attack. And the, the simplicity. Yeah. Of the, do you know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah. That and that's like the thing. Heavy. Yeah, there wasn't like many on the production side of things. It didn't feel like there was many like <laughs> producers that necessarily had done like their grade grade eight piano do you know what I mean but it was like but that was the that was the beauty of it it was yeah, like yeah. cool I'm not necessarily like I'm gonna use the sound of um a, a tap like dripping <laughs> do you know what I mean that's For gonna real. that's gonna be that's gonna be the melody you know yeah. and it's like and I think it's just yeah it just sounded like do you know what I mean? I look out the window now and it's just a bit of a grey day and like, it's just whatever. And it was like, but grand music had a way of capturing that sort of feeling of like, so not every, yeah, not everything's like sh- shiny and, and like gleaming. It's, it's rough around the edges kind of mm. thing. Your, your stuff, particularly on the EP, mm. there is an air of uh, instrumental influence. I mean, you, you clearly work with the same producer to, because to get the formula right the way you have, like that mm. intricate, there's a relationship there, right? It feels like there certainly is a, there's a, there's a kinship that works within outside the music because the, you really have to, there is this real kind of atmospheric and you just fall right into the pocket. You've got to know the producer, haven't you? Yeah, no, fully. Um, so I worked, yeah, exclusively pretty much with a guy called Mogul on the EP. Oh, the first track. Yeah, Mogul sick man. And the first track had um some co-production from an up and coming producer from Nottingham called Archie Stephen, who's super cool. Nice. But yeah, Mogul literally lives like 10 minutes from me. Um we're the same age. Um, we only yeah. met like a few years ago, but it's kind of like you know it's mad when it's like we've pretty much lived a couple of miles from each other. Mm very similar age, very similar, just kind of experiences, you know, like, um, and he's been producing and done tunes for like, you know, Getz and Bizzle and all these people that back in the day kind of Mm. stuff. And it's just been, just been cracking on his own stuff. And he got into producing a lot of um, film scores and stuff like that. So he's like bringing this total understanding. like a Yeah. Like a grime element, but then also he's got just this whole like, cinematic kind of understanding of how to really capture and build mood and tension and that kind of stuff and he's also an amazing piano player so um just all of that combined it was like I knew I wanted like beats that banged and kind of gave me the ability to kind of be skippy over them but also like like I've been was talking about at the beginning there's like a vulnerability there's fear there's worry there's hope and like yeah. I think he was just really really amazing at um capturing those moods in the production so yeah he he was um like totally integral to the, the so production sick. of the holy p do you record together is that yeah. see and that's like, you can yeah. tell man you can just yeah there's something in it you know no all credit to, to everybody putting out music full stop um, mm. with with the same values that, that are held with your stuff and others that are working within this, this genre that, that also I think is is so it diversifies I think I think being in the same room as someone else really does add an extra layer of uh, um, st- stepping into a world do you yeah. know what I mean like you're stepping yeah. into a world 
Yeah, a hundred percent. And like, I'm not, I'm not a producer, you know. Like, I can I can play a few like instruments to like an okay level, but I'm also very dependent on someone understanding what I'm trying to do. And sometimes <laughs> it's like, you know, yeah, you know, just. I'm chatting to Mogul and I'm probably just giving him a load of, like telling him a load of things. He's like, how am I supposed to interpret that? But he really sat with me, yeah, tried to understand, understand me as a person. And we're up, like, we've, we've developed a really good friendship, but just he really went above and beyond just in terms of trying to understand what I was doing, not just give me, because he's got, you know, he's a sick producer, bare, bare sick beats on his hard drive. But mm. I didn't take any of them because he really wanted to like, build something from scratch with me so um it's crazy getting to the mind the yeah mind is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and that's the thing and not like he just really loves the music do you know what i mean and so mm. he was just incredibly incredibly patient so yeah and again that's just kind of going back to the audience as well because what you're interpreting what it's mad isn't it it's like third party kind of influences so you'll say mm. some random stuff to him mm. to your producer mm. and you go I want it to sound like X, Y, Z meets da, 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 da. It has to be like that. No, then the strings, you know, that commercial that we saw the other day, I want it to be like that, you know. And before you know it, it's like, it's a complete hodgepodge of something that emo- is, is emotive to you and it relates to what you, you, ha- you had as an idea. Mm. But to, to the bovine, to the public, they don't even hear it in the same way. It's just you guys have morphed it into this thing just through random ideas and conversations. Yeah, no, it's crazy, man, because it's just like, and like, we listen, it's like when you listen back to some stuff and Mogul's like, I don't, like, how did we even make it? Do you know what I mean? Like one tune, there's a track called Essentials, which is the second track on the EP. And that was, that tune was an accident because basically we'd made a total different song and it's got some like roads quietly in the background. Or I don't know if it's roads, but it's like that kind of, that kind of feel. Yeah. And we just recorded this track and um, he'd accidentally just soloed like once that, that stem that, and I was like, wait, what's that? And he's like, Oh, I just kind of got that tucked in the back. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We need to build like a whole different song around Sick. this. And went from there and totally like just scrapped the other tune. Um, no way. So but, you got shot the really whole cool thing? Because that was all him, but he was just mad. <laughs> yeah. 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 We did, like that, the, the other tune got done and I wrote, I rewrote a song called essentials, but it was sick because it felt like, he made that, do you know what I mean? He played those chords in, but he was like, I would have never heard a song out of this. Like, but that was just, Man. he was just so down to like collaborate and like, let me go down my little rabbit holes as it were. And, you mm. know, cause there was loads of times where I was like, let's try this, let's try that. And it, and it you know, it's like, it didn't work, but yeah. that's all, that's all part of it. It's all part of the journey. And again, yeah. just going back to what you were saying about how the hell's, how the hell does any, how the hell do these things get made? That's the insane bit. Like, yeah. what's, actually, let us ask you that question. How do songs, how do songs that you create from inception, how, how, what's the best process for you in, as yeah. the MC? I think for me, it's interesting. Like, I was trying to write a bit this morning and I haven't really, I write fairly regularly, but it's probably, for me, it's been quite a long time. I probably haven't written a lyric in, I don't know, a month or so. So I just, sat down earlier, I was trying to write and nothing came, you know, mm. and it's like, mm. I had I, like moguls had sent me a beat, like, but nothing came. And is that because wow. you've got, is that because you've released the EP and that's, that's blossoming and doing its thing? Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a little bit of that. I think it's also just, I very much like, uh, respond to and react with, the atmosphere around me and you know mm. just sometimes like sitting in my house trying to write lyrics doesn't do it for me but I a lot of the time what I end up doing is I write in the studio because it's like the energy of mogul of what's going on of like playing stuff and also I think like putting a pressure on myself to deliver like yeah. I'm in the studio so let me like I don't want to waste my time I don't want to waste mogul's time so let me mm. do it and that's often when like the best stuff comes out and often it will be like I'll just hear a noise or like one little sound and it's like it suddenly will just unlock usually it just unlocks a line in my head that I didn't know what was there and then yeah and then I just follow like I said I just follow that rabbit hole and a lot of the time it might not lead to stuff but that's how pretty much 
nine percent of my songs have come out so mm. for me yeah i think it's the studio atmosphere that i like that sort of brings something out of me when it comes to making the music yeah because because sometimes you can have too much time some mm. but you know when you've got to clock in and clock out and you know you don't want to waste anybody's sometimes that pressure actually does add add a good a good incentive incentivizes you to get the, the best exactly out, right? yeah totally man uh, that's so. an interesting side to it yeah. That's an inter- Who were you listening to during the creative process then? Was there anybody that you would kind of bop in and, you know, vibe into MC wise? Yeah. Uh, MC wise. Who was I listening to? I mean, I've been, I've actually been listening to a lot. I've, I've listened to a lot of like Griselda. So like Benny the Butcher. Hmm. Uh, West Side Gun, Conway the Machine. Like, their content is totally different to mine. Yeah, yeah, totally. But there's, like, a rawness, just, yeah. like, such a rawness. There's a line um, in there, isn't there? It's, yeah. I feel yeah. Like. Um, I really, really, like, I was listening to Jay Huss's album a lot. Mm. I wouldn't say, like, I'm not sure where the kind of, the influence necessarily came from, but I was also listening to, like, a lot of R&B. I really, like, Sir and the Sago. Mm. Um, and yeah, but do you know what I listen to a lot? I listen to podcasts, man. So like I listen to a lot of um a lot of like store like not stories as in like audiobooks, but like um just like do you know Malcolm have you heard of Malcolm Gladwell? Nah. No, I haven't. Um, Ma- Malcolm Gladwell Fire. he's super cool, man. He's like a, he's an author. Yeah, yeah, check him out. He did like an amazing uh, interview with Gucci Mane when Gucci Mane come out of prison. Like he's super random. He's like this Canadian writer, historian guy, um, but he's written some amazing books. But he has a podcast called Revisionist History, which is about looking at uh, a bit of micro history and seeing how maybe it's been recorded and remembered wrong. Um, oh, so it's just about the idea sick. of like, yeah, it's about like the idea of like retelling the story as it should have been told. Mm. And I really like that idea of like, I, I felt like a lot of the time when I listen to some of my old music, I'm like, I wish I could tell that story how I should have said it then. Oh, of, that's, you know what I mean? Bro, so, that's like, that's a, that's a project in itself. Do you like listening to your old stuff? Do you like listening to your own stuff? Yeah. Do you? Um, hmm. Sometimes, like, I, I don't often find myself, like, thinking, oh, let me get in a car and listen. Like, I don't think I listen to my, myself out of, like, leisure. Mm. Um, if someone plays my tune, it depends what tune it is, to be fair. Like, I don't necessarily cringe. You know how, like, some people can't hear themselves? But I'm also yeah. not the type of guy that's like, right, I've got a two-hour journey. Let me, let me, let me hit Nick Brewer on Spotify. Like, I'm not going to be that... <laughs> I'm not going to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. Turn, turn <laughs> it down and, and just play it on repeat and spot if I get those numbers and the money. Yeah, up. exactly. I might do that. A little, yeah. bit of a, little bit of extra monthly income. But yeah, bit no, of a not... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm much more likely to listen to um, someone else speak probably. Like, like I said, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I just love stories. And like, so mm. I look for story and music or wherever I can find it. Because that translates it, doesn't it? That That's translatable into emceeing and storytelling of your own. Mm. Yeah, I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah, no, 100%. Because I think, like, what I love about a story is, like, there's so many... It's like, I often think, like, why is this... Say if I'm watching something, it's like, well, why is this a movie and not a documentary? Or why is this a series and not a movie? And a lot of the time, it's because of, like what the actual story is in the terms like what's the tension in the story and what does Mm. that better suit does that better suit like a just a two hour boom bang just a like an hour and a half documentary that gives you the facts whatever in this but it's like i love it's like did you watch um the last dance the michael jordan yes i did uh, yes like because that was really cool because i love basketball by the way but Mm. um that was cool because it was like you know, you can go on YouTube and type in like Michael Jordan biography, and there's probably like mm. <laughs> a lot of cool stuff you can watch. But it's like, yeah. but with that focus, or with like the the anchor point being his final season with the Bulls, kind of mm. thing, and everything going around that, it's like that's the the sun that the whole story orbited around. It's like yeah. it makes it more, 
interesting than just like L- Michael Jordan was born on this day that and do you, do you get what I'm saying? So yeah. It's like, it, it gives a more I, in-depth analysis on a particular part point that we all identified with because it was such a big moment in in cultured history yeah man mm. i mean just just watching that just like when you see because like obviously i don't remember i wasn't born when he was drafted and when he like signed with nike and so i do you know what i mean i've just grown mm. up in an era where like nike is nike you know yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it is and it's like whoa so converse was like the premier mm. brand for basketball mm. and 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 like obviously converse still do their thing now but you know to think of yeah. a time when when Nike wasn't the the leader, kind of the leader, it's like it's just really interesting to see how, like it's like that's a story in itself. You know, there's just all For these sure. different things that kind of happen. So yeah, I'm just really interested in storytelling. Did you feel like with that? Yeah, with that that doc. Well, it was a documentary. It was like a series. Mm. I, I I'm a big documentary fan. You know what I mean? Mm. And I like mm. things in bite size, quick. But I get it from your point of view because as a as a person of a fan of history, history and mm. reference points and stuff like that. And mm. also, you know, a, a, a good, well tied in story. I get how you'd, how you'd be digging that. I get how you'd be digging that. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just, I think, I know what you mean in terms of like, not everyone is, not everyone is going to sit down for like, hours and what something some people want like the bite size stuff and I can be very similar with that you know like there's so many times where I just want to s- just give me like a five minute YouTube video that will explain yeah. everything to me about this thing and that's super like there, there's definitely like a great place for that but I love like I think that's what I also love about basketball uh, apart from the sport which I find incredibly entertaining it's like all the other stories that are going on around it you know what I mean yeah 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 like, yeah whether it's like um Jordan and Kobe when they're playing at the all-star game against each other and it's like the old guard against the the new the, the new emerging star or you know even to now like you know Le- lebron and just sort of what it what it means for him at this stage in his career to win his fourth title and what what like what leadership what role leadership has played in his career and mm. yeah it's just like or just all the drama as well so like i'm here for all of it man. yeah totally it's, <laughs> like, it's a whole backstory yeah, like, and everything right yeah. It's like the whole backstory of it all. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. No, 100%. Um, from a from a critical ear point of view when you when you listen to your stuff, just going back to yeah. the whole the whole um analysis on listening back to your own stuff. Yeah. Do you think a lot of a lot a lot of the listenability to you being able to go back to original stuff, even this lay CP, it's down to the fact that you weren't at it on your own. You know, your your the collaboration with a producer or someone else that, as co-pilot or or captain allows you to be slightly more detached from it. I would imagine so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think there's a point of like this is it's not just mine. This is ours. I can mm. I can really appreciate what Mogul did there. I can also appreciate how that bit there just came together and we didn't even mean that, you know. Um I think there is a level of removal in a healthy, in a healthy way. And I think also I have learned from listening to myself like how important it is to listen in the sense of like, oh, I don't I don't know how my voice went like that there, or mm. I should have put more emotion in that, or you know, just those things. There is like a like a critical analysis that can also that does take place when I listen to myself, which yeah, which is important for me. Does that give? Do you think we give ourselves enough time? I mean, when I listen to my shit, I'm mm. listening with a complete critical ear, mm. and the you know, particularly these podcasts, you know, two a week, and I'll just throw them out cookie cut, cookie cut to a degree and listen mm. back to them. I don't listen to them with the view of listening through, you know, the whole conversation. It's more picking up elements of like, oh, okay, that needs to be accentuated. That needs to be strengthened mm. as a conversation. Okay, that intro needs to be... It's all that sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes those are the bits that get missed out when you're in the moment, mm. but you can't be too precious because you know you've got to... You've got to have a cookie-cutter mindset where you know where mm. you're going to... You can fight another day and do it again. 
Exactly. And it's also like, you don't want to overthink things. Like, well, I don't know anyway. Like, no. one thing I remember, like, the first time or one of the first times I heard Kendrick Lamar, and it was a song called The Heart Part Two. And like, he's spitting at the end, he's spitting so much, he runs out of breath and he's putting so much pressure into it that he starts to cough. Do you know what I mean? Mm, and it's like, mm, yeah, I remember it's that. Like, oh my gosh, like, there's not a better way to end that song because mm. it, I might have done that and thought, oh no, I've got to go again. Like I, I coughed, do you know what I mean? But it's mm. like, well, actually, for, for what he was trying to evoke in terms of feeling there, there's no better way to end it than like through a lack of breath and a cough. And that's not perfect, but it's perfect. Do you know what I mean? That's so, mad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The so, confidence um, to let that slide as well. Oh my gosh. Especially like that was su- such a such an early point in his career but and I think that's like that's why he's Kendrick Lamar do you know what I mean because he had he clearly had such a well I don't know him but I, I imagine that he had such a a sense of um he was sure of who he was to an extent yeah. and it's like yeah I'm gonna trust my own instincts because yeah. I don't know the the producer the engineer might have gone yo like let's do that again kind of thing for Kendrick to be like no nah, let's leave that I, I don't know how it happened but so it's like it's that it's that that, that path of like yes I want to be able to listen and think oh, I should have done that better I need to get that perfect mm. so like it's it's not this isn't a science do you know what I mean it's not like a maths where it's like you have to get to this final answer it's like yeah. no there's there's plenty of different paths that it could take and none of them are necessarily the wrong one I know what you mean there's some imperfections that that whilst you know you don't think too deep about it like Kendra probably didn't think too deep about no, we'll leave it in a school. Mm. But that yeah. set precedence for the whole tone in which people perceived him. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to be super, like, confident in knowing 100%. that... 100%. That's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy when yeah. you think about it. Yeah, man, it's mad. And it's just like, there's no... There's no... Like, you don't... Ha- like, I, I'm not, like, a huge fan of, like the auto-tune kind of vibe I never was it's just yeah. not for me personally but I think part of what it is it's like if you, even if you can't sing like <laughs> you know what I mean even yeah. if, it's like being a perfect singer or being a great singer or it's not necessarily about um, hitting all the notes perfectly it's about mm. the feeling that comes with it and it's like you don't need to okay. kind of like because then it yeah, makes you like, question everything because then it makes you... I get what you're saying, because because if your integrity is to be perceived in a certain way, then you'll mm. ultimately be critiqued for everything. If you if one thing is snagged, like, oh, but you're using auto-tune, so what yeah. else are you doing? I, mean, I get what you mean. Yeah. No, should, 100%. Should I tell you my, one of my bugbears? Is I actually Sorry. don't... I, I, you know, let's, let's bear in mind, this the generation now, they, they grew up on T-Pain, Soldier Boy, Lil Wayne. Mm. You know, these people were using auto-tune, and that's fine. Mm. Um, yeah. I'm kind of at peace with that because if someone doesn't use it, if if everyone doesn't use it, someone will, and they'll go up the ladder. You know, mm. I did question Kanye West's use of it on a couple of songs, but, but <laughs> yeah. I think on the whole, though, my biggest problem is if you're going to do something fucking live, live. You know what I mean? Like none yeah. of this like rapping over tracks that have the you know the the, the vocals already on it. Oh, I hate that, man. Bro. <laughs> I hate that. And I think, like, I supported um, Logic on tour, like, a few years back. And I was just, like, I was incredibly impressed at how... He taught me a lot about just touring, just from, like, watching him and just Mm. how... um, how seriously he took it, how he didn't miss a beat, how he warmed up his vocals. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, um, Like, he really he worked the stage and I think as rappers, I think like, if that's it, like performing, performing rap is interesting, isn't it? Because if I go and see like an amazing vocalist, for example, like a, a just a singer, they might not have to move from the spot and I might just be entranced yeah, with their vocals. And, and like with a rapper, it's knowing when to stand still. It's knowing when to move. But you've got to deliver the vocal. Do you know what I mean? And I don't oh want to hear God. it in the background because it's like, it's not like necessarily the same like um, amazing experience as when you just hear like a live vocal 
yeah. just an unreal live vocal in the flesh. But live live rap performance really has a place, and it's like now you got to work it, and you've got to make sure yeah. your voice is strong enough to to carry it. Yeah. Do you think with this lockdown right now, there's going to I know there certainly is a case with DJing, you mm. know, music sensibility and criteria, like the things that people like as DJs to listen to. They've been throwing that in their mix. I think mm. it's going to be very hard going back, going to going back to the Karens asking for requests on certain <laughs> Cardi B songs and stuff. I, you know, I, I would imagine a lot of them, um, DJs ain't going to be up for it because they've carved their lane. They've they've got themselves like hardcore followings that are working to their their uh, music policy. Mm. Mm. Do you think that? Do you think that's change changing for MCs as well? Do you think there is a a a a, 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 a feeling of yeah, we're going to stick to our guns on what we, with our integrity, believe in, mm. rather than playing up to an auto tune or playing up to a pop attitude or playing up to whatever's current and new? Do you think there's going to be a change? It feels that way to me. It feels like. You know, like I mentioned Griselda uh, in the US, like Benny the Butcher, Call Me the Machine, West Side mm-hmm. Gun. And it's like, that's that super, like, hard, gritty stuff. But a lot of it is like, that's not made for the radio. Do you know what I mean? And and how they're doing it is they're just putting out a huge amount of music and just kind of like really giving the listeners what they want to hear and they're making a career out of that. And it's not necessarily about getting a song that's playlisted on the radio or, or whatever, or getting mm. the, the, the post Malone feature or, do you know what I mean? Whatever mm. it might, whatever it is at this point. Um, and I think in the UK, I think, I think the UK kind of rap scene has definitely come a long way. Like when I think 10, 10 to 12 years ago, what kind mm. of, popular UK rap sounded like a lot of people wouldn't want to listen to that now. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, and, and I think it's on a journey and I think it's going in the right steps. Just I know what you're like saying. Authenticity. Authentic, exactly. Mm. Yeah, when I think back to some of the Chip songs, maybe even, you know, mm. some of those those songs of the day back then, mm. you know, post channel you i suppose yeah yeah Wait, you know. and it's like i get it do you know what i mean like you're you're young do you know what i mean there's a there's there's a there's a market for it there's money you don't know mm. how things are gonna you know i wasn't necessarily thinking i don't know what what decisions i would have made at the time if i was in that Dude. situation do you know what for i mean real, so it's like real. so um but you just like like things should like there's growth there's evolution and that kind of stuff yeah, it is. It is, and also, yeah, like you say, you you've got you've got <laughs> the evolution is within the genre and within music. Mm. Like yeah. you, you just jump on the ride and you kind of adapt and yeah, you work to what the current thing is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. What, what are you listening to much at the moment? Like, what are you listening to? Anything that's like caught your ear? Cool, caught my ear. Yeah, um, Corpse's um, husband, I think his name is. Corpse's okay. husband. Check his stuff. Corpses. Like crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is like some new shit. Like he's got some crazy voice. Crazy yeah. voice and just I don't know where he sprung from. He's like he's like rap meets Marilyn Manson or something. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's it's out there. It's out there. Um okay, who else am I checking? Who else am I checking at the moment? The new Buster album, man. Yeah. Well, I say I say new. We wouldn't want to, you know, this is evergreen podcasting but the recent buster <laughs> album is uh, fire yeah yeah, yeah yeah i enjoyed that i enjoyed yeah. that I'm, i mean i'm always i always enjoy listening to buster rap but yeah that was because yeah. it's been a while for him hasn't it and it was like yeah. it's, you, you can feel like he really put this album together yeah 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 totally totally there's so much out there as well at the moment you know lots of yeah. things catch there was oh man there was somebody that caught my ear the other day. i forget his name now I saw yeah. it on the Semtex top five. Uh, you know, I love Semtex. Okay, yeah. and dude, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's just so much. Sometimes you need somebody to be, you know, on a day where you're just like, I want something new, but man, like, I, it's just congested with what, what could we possibly choose from? It's like, it's great having yeah. someone to, like, manage that shit sometimes. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. There's so much music, man. It's so overwhelming. much. It's overwhelming. And a lot of it actually is based on. 
Yeah, actually, that's a good point to ask you because you have gone down the route of an EP. And now when yeah. I think about what you said about the, the basketball documentary, and mm. I think you, you consume music in a long form, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I get really annoyed when I just hear, like, two or three songs from an artist that I like. I'm like, where's the where's the project? Do you yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But a lot of people don't really listen like that now. And it's like, you know, because there's so many playlists and... And whatever, and mm. you know, there's not necessarily the same need for someone to listen to the whole album of someone. They can just pick and take the bits that they like. So yeah, make their own playlists and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's still good. You know, I just gotta let people listen to it in the ways that they want it. You know, bro. You know what? I feel like the most newest and most secretive revolution in music is is that people mm. because they consume music mostly in their headphones and to themselves mm. and they mm. can curate and you know have on repeat whatever they like is some mm. of their most guilty pleasures they repeat them like eight mm. times yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? like, they could be running or they could be you know not that i'm suggesting anything here but you know <laughs> like i was saying if you really feel yeah, something yeah. sometimes it could be like after the third time there's got to be someone in another room going have you had enough yet mate <laughs> <laughs> no, hundred percent, man. But yeah, I think that's yeah, that's that's super true. That's super true. And like, it's just interesting, isn't it? Like, even some of the playlists that I see on like Spotify and stuff, it's like, you know, like the workout playlists and all this stuff. It's cool. Yeah. And it's like, it makes perfect sense. It's just I never really thought I listened to music like that. Like, I've never been like a workout playlist guy at the gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I will have like a revisionist history podcast on, but I know I'm probably a bit weird like that. But it is cool just to see, you know, what people go to for certain things, and I think it that's is a really that's a really good thing. Like, so yeah, yeah, there's loads of there's loads of pros in how how music is consumed these days. Yeah, that's right. You just kind of want a little bit more um, return for the, you know, I, I I feel like creating your own brand offsets anything to do with making the music because there isn't enough mm. money in it and people consume it through these portals that aren't yeah. you know it's really the quality and standards and what the focus is really is determined on these these platforms that are paying yeah. out it's crazy yeah, no, 100%, man. 100%. but who knows the future yeah. is yet what's the future for you my brother what's the future the future so yeah like i'm um I've got another EP that I've got coming, which is a collaboration with a really cool artist called Phil Simmons. So that will be dropping um, kind of early next year. Nice. Yeah, working on like a couple podcast ideas myself, you know, just kind of, as I've been sharing, loving stories and just looking at different ways to kind of like tell stories. But that's kind of in an early stage. So hopefully that will... Um, develop as, as it goes on but yeah just making music man i think like just just being consistent and putting stuff out um yeah i just really want to put a lot of stuff out next year and just see what happens man yeah man next year's going to be a whole different game yeah how exciting <laughs> a lot, a lot of, yeah a lot of plans a lot of 2020 plans got like <laughs> mm. for everyone got re really kind of jigged so let's see what 2021 presents yeah, for, for us but for what for what it's worth and everything I'm seeing from this side, brother, you're on target, you're killing it, and you've done really, really well for 2020. Smash it. Thank you, man. No, I really appreciate that, man. Thanks for thanks for taking the time to chat, man. I really All do day, appreciate it. All day, man. All day. Thank you so much. Killer Geller yeah. podcast, a core striking with a vengeance, sharing is caring, sharing, sharing alike. We are like it was out of fashion, right? Big shout, Nick, bro. We out. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace.